Good morning, church. Um, good morning. If you guys don't know me, I'm the young adult pastor here. Uh, my name's Brent. Um, you know, I had a lot that I wanted to say, and I totally forgot it once I got up here. Now I remember, if you guys don't realize, those announcements are extremely difficult. Like, they're really hard. When I was praying for God's help, I really needed it. Because at that point, Casey and I had tried that video like 10 to 15 times. And you just, because once you start doing it, you have to get every word correct. So next time you see Kinsey, just stop her and say, hey, I appreciate those video announcements because they are extremely difficult. Like, Case, there was one point where Casey and I were sweating and we were like, we just got to stop. Like, we just got to let Kinsey come in here and do it because we can't do it anymore. But, um, th yeah, those video announcements are really hard. I want to thank everyone for being here this morning. Tyler asked me to speak, I think, like a month and a half ago. But I don't know if he knew that he asked me to speak on a day he wouldn't be here. I think he said, hey, August 7th sounds like a great day. And then a couple weeks later, he goes, hey, by the way, um, I won't be there. I was like, okay, I mean, that, that kind of stinks a little, but that'll be fine. Neither will John. Okay. Neither will Richard. Okay, that's fine, I guess. So three of our staff members are gone. And I kind of think of it like if I say or do something stupid... At least Tyler's not here. So if I say or do something stupid, um, if you want to wait to tell him for a little bit, that'll be fine. Um, I'm, not asking you, I'm not asking you to lie, all right? Um, but I'm just going to go on. If you guys have your Bibles, I'm going to be in John chapter 15 this morning. John chapter 15. And it will be on the screen behind me. John chapter 15, starting in verse 10. So once you, and if you have a pen, you have a highlighter, there are going to be things I'm going to ask you to highlight, underline. Um, so just get ready for that. John chapter 15, starting in verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment. That ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you. That you, should go f that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Will you guys pray with me this morning? God, I want to thank you for how much you love us. God, I want to thank you for Jesus dying for us on the cross. God, I want to thank you um, for this ability to be up here and talk about how great you are. So, Father, I thank you for the ability to feel your presence this morning. I thank you for the fact, knowing that you are here with us, that we're not talking about a God who's not alive. We are talking and worshiping a God who's very much alive, very much with us this morning. So, God, as we open up and read your word this morning, God, I pray that you'd use the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. Speak to, the, speak to our hearts that we try to hold and keep to ourselves. God, open up the areas of our life that we try to hide from you. God, again, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for everything you do for us. I ask all you things in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this story, I'm going to put this down. In this story, this is Jesus with his disciples on his way to die. So you would think that as Jesus is on his way to die, the last things he is going to say have to be important. If you've, if you've ever sadly lost a loved one, they, they usually share their most intimate thoughts and feelings right before they pass. It's, I love you. It, it's something heartfelt. It's the same with Jesus right now. As he knows he's going to die for the sins of the world, he shares something that's really important. He shares the wisdom from his Father in heaven. And that's what I want to talk about this morning is laying down our life. So if you have your pen, if you have your highlighter, I'm going to ask you some things. I want to kind of go with you through, through these verses. 
back to verse, verse 10, if it, can, if it can be up there, verse 10. It says, if you keep my commandments. So what Jesus says, he says, look, keep my commandments. And then he goes on in verse 11 to say what happens when we keep his commandments. You keep my commandments. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So keep my commandments so your joy may be full. So if you have a highlighter, if you have a pen, underline where it says keep my commandments and write a one next to it. And then in verse 11, underline or highlight that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. And then put a two next to it. Because when you keep his commandments... You find yourself having more joy. And then so the question is, what's the commandment that we have to follow? That comes next. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Underline or highlight that. That ye love one another as I have loved you. And then last but not least, he says how to love. He's not only telling us to love, he's telling us how to love. That ye lay down your life. Because greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. And when we think about laying down our life, giving up of our life, we, we think of military service. About how a man will give up his life for his country. And it's that, it's that kind of same attitude here. That a man must give up. To love other people, you must be willing to give up up a part of you but Christ takes it a step further and says if you want to love others you must be willing to lay down your whole life and you see Jesus had an intimate relationship with the people who were here these are his disciples these are the men he traveled with for three years they hung out together they probably they ate together they laughed together they did all these things together he has an intimate relationship with these people And you see, relationships have this great ability to change us. I I think if we're honest, not not to sound like some Nicholas Sparks kind of guy, but the best relationships are the relationships that change us. And that's what Jesus is doing here, is that his relationship with these disciples are going to change them. And so throughout my life, I I can think of relationships that have changed me. I can think of when I was in, oh, that was loud. I can think of when I was in middle school, how relationships during middle school changed how I dressed. I thought baggy pants were cool, all right? I can think in high school about how there were things that I did. I, I've been married for over a year now, all right? I'm going to get a little personal, all right? I, I'm letting you guys in. Don't use this against me, all right? I've been married for over a year now, and I think, um, I think it was just like a couple weeks or maybe a month or two after we got married. And Chris and I were hanging out, and she, she said, Brent, she might have said honey, I don't know. Honey, she, she probably did. She probably, like, tried to suck me. Baby, can, can, I, can I tweeze your eyebrows? And I was like, whoa! Like, I'm giving you my life, but I'm not giving you these, all right? And she goes, she, she wasn't pushing. She wasn't pushing, all right? I was like, no, no, like, I'm not that type of guy, like, I don't know, I'm not doing that, and then she, and then we let it go, and then later she goes, like, just, yeah, just please, it'll be fun, it will be fun, she said, <laughs> it will be, and I'm like, I mean, my, my eyebrows weren't disgusting, I thought, at least, um, but eventually I'm like, okay, like, if it makes you happy, happy wife, happy life, right, if it makes you happy, so she's like, she's like full of joy, right? She's, she's hyped. She's like, lay down, all right? She goes, gets the tweezers, and I'm laying there having no idea what I was getting into, all right? She's like, this may hurt a little. And I'm like, okay, like, I've been hurt before, honey. I'm a grown man, all right? She, no lie, she goes to pluck. And I go, whoa, what are you, I'm like rubbing my eye really hard. I'm like, that hurt. And she said, honey, I don't even think I got it. (laughs) And I'm, and now I'm like, I'm angry. All right. Like, 
I, I like to think I'm the kind of guy who doesn't get angry really fast. But she went to tweeze that, and I'm like, I'm angry. All of a sudden, I'm angry at my wife. I'm like, who is this woman I married? You are evil for bringing this pain onto me. And you see, before we had gotten married, that was never on my radar. I don't know if I was that dude with a unibrow and no one told me. I don't know. She was just helping me out. But that's just, that's just something, that's one way she's changed me. I have a higher tolerance for pain now. I have two eyebrows. I don't know. Um, but I'll, I have to say this, though. Men, I know there are a few of you out there who may not want to admit it, but I'm telling you, after she did it, I went and looked, and I was like, okay. Now I know why. I can tell the difference. And so women, there may be, ladies, there may be some of you in here who say, I've been, wait, I've been wanting my husband to do that for years. Husbands, you may, be, you may have been fighting it for years. If you learn nothing else this morning, just let her try, all right? <laughs> Hopefully that's not all you learn. But that relationship has changed me. Marriage has changed me, as it should. I have grown. There are things, like I said, I do now that I hadn't done before. And I think if you're here this morning, and you're claiming to have a relationship with Jesus, it has to change you. I don't think you can have a relationship with Jesus and it not change you. I, and I, I want to dig into that. Because I'm afraid that America is full, and, and I'm, I'm this way sometimes, that we, we claim and we proclaim that we are followers of Jesus, and we have a relationship with Jesus, but it never changes us. And when that's true about our lives, I would question how strong that relationship really is. And so that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, church how strong that relationship really is. And so this, this leads me into my first point here. You want to you have a note? If you want to know how strong your relationship is with Jesus, you can see by what you do. That leads me to my first point here. The gospel calls us to lay down our life. That when, when God calls us and when Jesus comes into our life, when we, when we create a relationship with Jesus through his death on the cross, that it changes our life, and it changes, the, it changes everything about our life. And what Jesus says in, these word, in, this, in this passage is he goes, look, if you're going to have a relationship with me, if you're going to follow me because I'm about to die, but I'll come back. I'll be resurrected. When, one of the things that the, the speaker said at the youth camp this year, me and my wife went up there for a night, is he said Jesus went from living next to the disciples, died, was resurrected, so that he may live in the disciples. And I thought, oh, that's good. Because when Jesus is living inside of me, it should push me and urge me to action. Not to sitting on my butt. And to be honest, church, there are times where I like to sit when I should probably be moving. I should probably be coming to action. So when Jesus said, when he tells the disciples, look, if you want to have joy, follow my commandments. This is the commandment, that you love one another. And you love one another by laying down your life. And the, the best part about this is that Jesus had spent the last three years of his life laying it down. That when Jesus said this, they knew what he was talking about. Because you see, with, with the gospel, it wasn't just that he died for us. It's that he made daily decisions to live for us. And if you want to know, Pastor Jerry, I'm loving your word right now. <laughs> <laughs> At least we know it's scripture, all right? Um, Sorry, I, had a, I shouldn't have said that. Back to here. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, when he said this, when he called them to lay down their lives, they had seen this in action by Jesus' daily decisions. 
Because you see what Jesus didn't do is he didn't live how he wanted to live for three years and then wake up one day and go, you know what? Time to go to the cross. I guess it's not about me anymore. I guess I got to make it about other people. No, for his entire time on earth, he gave up his life to serve others. That's the gospel. That he made daily decisions with eternal benefits. You want to you know what it looks like to lay down your life? It's daily decisions with eternal benefits. We as Christians can't, we can't just go through life however we want, making our, all of our decisions based on how we feel, based on what we want. And then one day when we're about to die, even though we don't know that, we think, oh, I should probably get right with God. It's probably time to get right just in case something bad happens. No, Jesus taught us how to lay down our life. And if we're honest, if, if I'm honest, that when I wake up in the morning, my first thought isn't, God, how can I lay down my life today for my wife? God, how can I lay down my life in front of the people that I come in contact with? It's, man, I'm tired. Can I just please hit the snooze button, God? It's, I don't want to go to work. It's, what am I eating for breakfast? It's about Brent. It's all about me. But those things are common. But the more, the more I love myself is the less that I can love Jesus and serve him. If your life isn't characterized by putting other people first, it isn't characterized by Jesus. And he, he, when I say that, here's, here's my first thought. If I, if I can be a, a little sinner here this morning. It, that, that my life isn't always characterized by serving others. That my life isn't always about putting others first. Even though Jesus says you want to love people, lay down your life for them. But then I think, well, what about Brent? When does Brent get what Brent wants? When will people come to serve me? When will people be excited about me? But that's not how Jesus taught us to lay down our lives. Church, this is what I want us to get this morning. That laying down our lives means lives are no longer about us. They can't be. They're all about Jesus. Jesus made daily decisions for you and for me. And you know what? That's what captivates me about God's love. That's what makes me love and appreciate Jesus. Because you know what? I'm thankful for his death now that I don't have to experience death and be separate, separated from him forever. Because I've turned from sin and given my life to Jesus, I now can live in eternity with God. I praise God for that. But I'll praise God also for the moments that Jesus was willing to give up his time. He was willing to give up of himself. What a, one of the most mesmerizing stories in all the scripture to me is that Jesus had the power to stop them from hanging on the cross. And I, I, I have a tendency to have a big mouth. I, I, I say a lot of stupid things. You, you know that, that, like, they say if you don't have, like, you, you probably should stop talking if you don't have anything nice to say. I try that really hard, and sometimes I fail. But Jesus, who had all of this power, he created the earth. He created the world. He had all of this power. And they took him as a prisoner. They beat him. They spit on him. They whipped the flesh all of, off of his back, and even still, he had all of this power. And if I'm Jesus, I, I won't be disrespected like that when I'm the one with the power, when I'm the one in charge here. But Jesus teaches us that the true meaning of power isn't how much power you have, but how you use it. That he was willing to give up his power and use it for us. 
that he was willing, that he wasn't willing to make it all about him, but he made it all about us. That's what I'm thankful for, church. And I hope that you're thankful for that this morning, too. That it, he had daily decisions to lay down his life. And so I, I want you to think about this morning, is your life characterized by putting others first? If, they, if people were to name characteristics of you, busy, funny, having two eyebrows, not one, I don't, I don't know. If they were to name char- characters, oh, lost it. If they were to name those about you, would you be funny? Would you be strong? Would you be smart? Or can they say, you know what? Wow, that guy lays down his life for people. Because that's not, I don't think that's how people would always describe me. But that's how I want to be. Because I know when that's said about me, I know that I have joy. And I know that my joy is full because that's what Jesus said. So, church, if you're, if you're here this morning and you're saying, you know what, Brent, this is my first time. I don't have a lot of joy. Man, I, I implore you, get to know Jesus. Outside of him, you will never experience true joy. You will never have joy that is full. And so as, as we begin to lay down our life, things change about us. Our attitude about ourselves changes. It's no longer about us. Our identity has to change. Because your identity can't be all about you and all about Jesus. And that leads me to my second point. I'm going to be in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, and this is, a, this is a huge, I love this verse. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That Jesus loved us. He gave himself for us. He laid down his life for us. And what Paul says at the beginning of the verse here, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. What Paul was was writing to the church here is he said, I'm no longer living. Life is no longer about Paul. Paul ceases to exist. It is now Christ who lives in me. My life is about him and his desires for my life and his glory. And so my second point is our identity, or my second point is, it should be, there we go. Our true identity is found in Jesus. That when we are willing to lay down our life, our identity changes. Scripture says that when we turn from sin and give our life to Jesus, we begin a relationship with Jesus, that we are a new creation, that old things are passed away and we have become new. Our identity has changed. We were dead and now we're alive. And once we are made alive in Christ, we continue to change. We continue to grow. And as you continue to lay down your life, your life slowly but gradually stops becoming about you. Because you will always, because we are sinners, you will always have eternal conflict. Okay, how can I serve people today? What about my feelings? What about my needs? There will always be a conflict. But a decision must be made day in and day out to lay down our lives. And church, let me tell you, it's not easy. I'm not up here saying, you know what? Lay down your life for the cause of Jesus. And you'll get everything you've ever wanted. I can tell you, you'll get everything you need. But you may not get, life may not turn out how you want it to. And that's a, part, that's a part about life that, if we're honest, some of us 
most of us, all of us don't like, but life doesn't always turn out how we want it. But God promises to give us what we need. He promises us joy. And so, and so church, again, I'm imploring you that you have to have the ability to lay down, I almost knocked that speaker over, you have to have the ability to lay down your life Yet your, our lives have to stop being about us. My life, like Paul said, I'm no longer living. It is Christ who's living in me. I have been crucified. That when I turn from death unto life, that I died and Jesus rose. And so you may be here this morning and you understand this is, this internal conflict. That you want to do great things for Jesus. But you think you can only do great things once you're comfortable, once your needs are met, once your feelings are validated. And if you're waiting for that, I'm afraid you're never going to start. That I can't wait until my life is perfect or I get everything I want when I start laying down my life. I can't wait for Kristen to make me happy. And then I'll be like, you know what, now I want to be a godly husband. Kristen's done, you know what, I came home, the house was clean, she made my favorite dinner, meatloaf, all right? And then, you know what, hey honey, you look nice today. That would make me a terrible husband. No, I, I wake up. And before she even says anything, I'm willing to lay down my life. I go to work, and there may be a bad situation going on at work, and I'll go, you know what? Once you guys fix this mess, once you guys stop being nasty, once you guys stop being jerks, once you guys change, you know what? Then I'll lay down my life for you. Then I'll think about you before I think about myself. But that's not the gospel. That Jesus made conscious decisions to serve his disciples, to love his disciples, that he still loved and served Peter, even though he knew Peter would deny him, that he still chose to love Judas, even though he knew he would betray him. Guys, Jesus hung out with Judas for three years. And we never hear about in Scripture where Jesus was talking bad or hating or doing anything about Judas. And if I'm Jesus, every time Judas says something and I knew he was going to kill me, there would probably be a huge eye roll. Like, dude, I know you're faking it. Don't even try it. <laughs> but you know what? He still washed his feet. And there are times when I may feel like someone's, I know someone's talking behind my back. I know someone's gossiping. And, you're, and Jesus says, Follow my example and wash their feet. No way do I want to do that. But you know what? It's when I do that that I find joy. I may not feel it in the moment, but Jesus promises it. And in, in going forward as a church, my heart's desire, if, it's hard for me to say, church, this is what we should do, because I'm not Tyler. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not taking over, I promise. Um, <laughs> we have to be willing to lay down our life. That on Friday night, there were some of us that, that went to, and I know not everyone can make it, and that's not the expectation. But at this time, some who couldn't make it came, and it was hot, it was sweaty. But we came and laid down our life and gave up of our time to serve those in our fair fair community at the movie night. And you know what? Coming up this week on Thursday, we're having the, the festival for the Hamilton Police Department. And I'll be there laying down my life for those who would be willing to lay down their life for me. Guys, we're, we're doing all of these things in our community because we want our community to know we love them like Jesus loves us and loves them. And if, if some of them are saying, you know what, I'm not coming to your church, that's fine. 
we'll go to them. And we'll lay down our lives for them. Because Jesus laid down his life for me. And so maybe you can't say this morning, you know what, my identity can be found in me laying down my life. That's not something that can be said of me. You have this awesome ability to start right now. The only thing that stops you from serving Jesus is you. The only thing that stops me from doing more kind, more serving things is me. Because I may be in a bad mood, because I'm tired, because I'm hungry. But those things are pathetic excuses in my life. Not to be kind, not to serve my wife, not to serve my friends. Church, let it be said of you that you have spent your life laying it down for others. Let it be said of you that you weren't one to complain when life wasn't all about you. That you weren't one to say, you know what? What about my needs? What about what I want? What about my feelings? No, let, let, let us have the attitude of, you know what? What about what my sin did to Jesus on the cross? What about my selfishness that caused Jesus to be nailed to a cross for my sin? And so I'm going to end on a question. How are you going to lay down your life? Because God has placed each and every one of us on different streets, with different families, with different jobs. And the expectation is that we wake up tomorrow and we'll go to work. And we'll spend time with our family. And God has placed you there to be an example, to lay down your life for them. So when you and I wake up tomorrow morning, that I can make the decision, I'm going to lay down my life for my wife. I'm going to lay down my life for everyone I come in contact with. Because Jesus laid down his life for me, and if I follow his commandments, I find joy and joy everlasting. So that's why I'm laying down my life. In a hundred years, in 150 years, my grandkids may not know my name, but as long as they know Jesus, I'm okay with that. And I pray that you say the same thing about your family. Because people knowing Jesus is more important than them thinking I'm some great, funny, cool guy. I don't care about that. Because I'm not those things. How are you going to lay down your life? Let me, let me close using that analogy of earlier I used earlier. That my relationship with my wife changed me. I now think and do things I didn't do before. I sometimes buy flowers. I can probably buy flowers more, honey. I'm sorry. I sometimes do that. I, there are things that I watch TV shows now that I never thought about watching before. <laughs> Not going to say what, though. <laughs> I, I clean now a little bit more. A little bit, though. Not a lot. There are things that I do now that I didn't do before. That I, pay, I now know what clothes match and what clothes don't match. But also, I care about doing things that make my wife happy. That I no longer come home and think, you know what? I want Taco Bell for dinner. You know what, Kristen? You can get your own food. No, it's, honey, what do you want? I don't know, what do you want? You know how that conversation goes. <laughs> it's, it's thinking of someone else before I think of myself. Church. Has your relationship with Jesus changed you? When is the last thing, when is the last time that your relationship with Jesus has moved you to take action? When is the last time that your relationship with Jesus has caused you to lay down your pride and not make it all about you? Husbands, when is the last time your relationship with Jesus has caused you to talk to your wife 
in a better, nicer tone? When's the last time your relationship with Jesus has caused you to maybe think, maybe I should do the dishes so my wife won't have to? Maybe I'll come home from work and let my wife go out and get a cup of coffee while I take care of the kids. Wives, when's the last time your relationship with Jesus has caused you to say something that lifts your husband up? When's the last time that as a follower of Jesus, your relationship has caused you to go to work and not gossip about your boss, not gossip about your other co-workers? That's what laying down your life looks like. It's no longer about us. It's no longer about me. It's all about him. So church, is your relationship with Jesus just a commitment to you? And here's what I mean by that. That your idea of a relationship with Jesus is that you have to be on church on Sunday. I won't cuss. I'll pray before I eat. All things that we should be practicing. But that's all we care to do because I don't want Jesus to cause me to be nice to people I don't want to be nice to. I don't want my relationship with Jesus to cause me to actually care about other people. Or is your relationship with Jesus just something that makes you go to church on Sunday? Because if that's it, if that's all your relationship with Jesus causes you to do, is just come here, go out to eat afterwards, pray before you eat, then you are missing out on so much. You're missing out on so much joy. You're missing out on everything. 